finally come to the position that, well, if, if it's not natural, it has to be supernatural. Hey guys, today I had the pleasure of speaking with Bear. He is the director of the Octagon Hall Museum in Franklin, Kentucky. A wonderful man, lots of stories to tell. I think you could spend hours talking to Bear. I almost did, but I hope you enjoy this video that I've uh, put together for you and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks. Since I started researching Octagon Hall just from start to finish, what I could find on um, um, newspaper databases, uh -huh. ancestry, ancestry.com, find the grave, and even just some of the, the stuff on your actual web site and then that led me to other links um i wanted to ask you too do you know what andrew i know he was a plantation owner but what what did he do on his plantation like how did he make his money because that i couldn't find andrew was in the leather uh, he had a, a company in uh, uh russellville kentucky which was about 30 miles away and other family members were there also uh, the structure still stands to this day. It was a museum. It was a saddle shop and had uh, two buildings uh, to it. Uh, it was a uh, two-story uh, building. Uh, and uh, he made skills over there. Now, uh, also, at the, at the home, he, would, uh, he had some uh, uh, guys there that were talented, and they would make shoes for some of the people around the area. Yeah? And uh, so... Uh, he also grew tobacco, and he was yeah. well known for his tobacco. Uh, uh, yeah, he liked cigars, yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, he sold tobacco also. So yeah. he had a lot of different things for income in the in the thing, uh, you know. So it's really funny because when you look at the house or the outside of it, uh, you know, today people like to put something outside to say you got money, right? Well, back in those days, uh, he, he put brick around the outside of the house. The way that you would show that you had money is that you would put uh, a different kind of brick structure on the front. And what he did uh, is he used Flemish bond, which means there's a long brick, a short brick, a long brick, a short brick, all the way across. It takes up a lot more brick. Now, you got to also remember that he put three rows of brick around the whole side of the house. Oh, wow. You know, the house that you're sitting in there had three rows of brick. And that's why the door jams are so wide. And that one main wall there when you were in the dining room, he also used brick to reinforce it. And he used three rows of brick inside the house. So that makes, takes that structure right there and makes it a very wide door jam. So. I don't. I don't think that house is falling down anytime soon. <laughs> no, no, it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy. It's 176 years old, and you were in it, and it's about 95 percent original. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you walk around, it doesn't squeak. It don't do too much. It's no, not like the houses that are built today. So. I had um, um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, Andrew. Like this, so much I want to ask you actually, but. I, I did, like, I, I know when he died and it was typhoid fever. I know that um, Elizabeth passed away. I know that he and Elizabeth had three children. Now, yes. this is something I wanted to say too. I saw or heard somewhere else someone saying, oh, there's people who say that Mary didn't die and she lived to be an old lady and so on and so forth. Um, I found out where their mistake is made there and I'm wondering if you know what it was too because... There was another Elizabeth Caldwell who had, I think, five children. One of them was Mary, and Mary did live to bed, but it's absolutely nothing to do with our Andrew. Absolutely. Nothing. So, yeah. so I found that I cleared that up. I thought, oh, thank goodness for that. Um, so yeah, so definitely little Mary passed in the house, um, and um, Elizabeth. That's what I wanted to ask you. Um, so little AJ, the baby who had fallen down the steps, I believe, yes. is that correct? Mm -hmm. And passed away from, from that. Um, but Elizabeth, according to the records, Elizabeth died just before he did, a few months before he did. That's wrong. what I can No? Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah, very, 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 very wrong. 
Elizabeth uh, Akers, Elizabeth Akers Caldwell died when she was 30. Ah, uh, okay. And, and the kids were still young. They had had, uh, when they first moved into the house, they had had uh, Fanny, the first daughter, uh, Mary Elizabeth, the second daughter. And, uh, and then uh, that's where that hidden staircase came up where they went up into that room above what they used as the master bedroom while the house was being finished. Uh, and it was, it was a very protected area. It didn't have a door on it because the upstairs wasn't finished. So it was all that way. Now, after the house was completed upstairs, they opened a doorway, put a doorway on it, all that stuff. So it wasn't a hidden room anymore. But uh, she dies at 30, uh, uh, 18 months uh, after she gives birth to Andrew Jackson Caldwell Jr. or AJ. AJ, yep. AJ dies uh, shortly, you know, at 18 months by falling down the stairs in the center of the hall, uh, in, in the center of the hall there, and uh, breaking his neck. And of course, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, AJ, and Mary are, are buried supposedly in the plot there outside. Um, in yeah, the there used to be park. four of them there. There used to be four because when Andrew died, Andrew was buried in the plot also. I was going to ask you about that because I see he's not buried there now. Uh, on Ancestry.com it says um, Fairfield or somewhere like that. Something there, Bu he's, he's buried in Fairfield Cemetery in uh, Bowling Green. Bowling Green. And that's an interesting thing. Uh, when, Andrew, when Andrew gets remarried in 1854 on Christmas yeah. Day in Russellville, yeah. he marries Harriet Morton Caldwell. Yeah. And, uh, together, they're together for 12 years. They have 11 children. Yeah, uh, seven of them, <laughs> yeah, seven of them die. Uh, seven of them live to adulthood. Four of them yep. die. Uh, mm -hmm. before adulthood. And then uh, Andrew passes in 1866, right after the war, uh, two months before his last daughter was born. Yeah. And he's buried there on the property. And the person who spent the most time in Othian Hall and lived there was Harriet. Yes, yeah, she Harriet did. I saw there. that. Yeah, Harriet was there from 1854 all the way until 1918. Yep. She sells the house in 1918, moves to Bowling Green, passes in 1920. Funny uh, thing, but her will. It was her wish to have Andrew with her. Yes, he yes. wanted to have Andrew with her. Oh, and gosh. So, they, so they went and down, down the Andrew up and put him in the same grave that she was in. Yes, she is. Yeah, because I've seen that grave stone so they're together right, there. So, so from from what I what I've read and this is where why I'm talking to you so you can correct me if what I found out is wrong. So so the war starts and everybody knows what happened well I hope most people know why the civil war started and and, and it was brother against brother basically back in the day. Um yeah. um but but the when they were being when the union was advancing and they were sort of on the on the run and it was looking not good it's my understanding that a lot of them were at Octagon Hall, up to around about 10,000 troops camped out on the grounds at Octagon Hall. Um, and that leads me to my next question in the hospital part, like, well, a hospital, kind of, like, you know, a lot of plantations back in the day did that. That's my understanding as well. Would have, you know, the women would tend to the wounded and doctors and so on and so forth. But the room that's upstairs at Octagon Hall now that you've got done up as a, a hospital room, yeah. would that have been the hospital room or would it have been downstairs? Would they have converted downstairs? Oh, I'm just thinking practicality. <laughs> like rather than have to take wounded men up the stairs, do you think that they did it downstairs or is there documentation to say it was upstairs or was it the whole house just about yeah. except for the bedroom? The like, You know, when, when the Confederates first come there uh that was on february 13th 1862 mm -hmm. and they had just been bombarded in bowling green that was the confederate capital yeah and no battle pursued just continual fire and they marched to this house 
And as I said, there was three plantations there. Uh, the person that was leading the way uh, was uh, Anu the house, and his name was John Caldwell, and it was his nephew. Nephew, yeah. I saw, I saw he was in the Kentucky Ninth, and he was a captain at the time. He becomes a colonel later, goes on to be a state senator, all kinds of different stuff, and even goes into Congress. Uh, but, but they opened the basement up. Because you had the winter kitchen outside that had hot, you could make hot water there. Yeah. As soon as you enter the door, you know, there was no porch around it. It's just a flat porch and over the top of it. And you could get underneath of it. And that's how you, work, how you got into the basement. And is that so, where the stairs are? Yes. Yep. The, yeah, the, the stairs weren't there. You came, it was, it was cold and the, the, the porch was there. But no yep. underpinning, no nothing like that. So they would come in from the center and uh, step down, and they're right by the winter kitchen. So they would bring the men in there. They would open the windows for airflow, and they would do, uh, you know, amputations. Yeah. They didn't have any medical uh, stuff or senses back there. They were very afraid of infection. So what they would do is you know, they would talk to a guy and just imagine, I always use the reference of going, okay, if I'm laying there and I've got my hand shot, and I'm, they're going to say, Bear, that could get affected. So, so we better cut it off right here at the wrist so it doesn't get infected and then we'll cauterize it and then it won't be, there won't be any effect. And then they would just throw it out the window and somebody will pick it up later and they'll carry me outside and I'll lay down in agony and pain until it goes away. Um, so that's what they did. Just okay. a continual session of nothing but amputations coming in there. Okay. Amputating. A lot of men died from shock. A lot yeah. of men died before they actually got there. And so we have graves on the property. We have bone piles on the property. So there's all kinds of, of, of wonderful things to make it more haunted than it really needs to be. Uh, oh. Did they, um, when that, um, one assumes that when that was happening, they would have just dug a hole somewhere on the property and got rid of the limbs. Um, exactly. I, that, that's what would have happened there. And if the soldiers passed away, it would have been the same thing. They would have just buried them. So it's probably on the property, not necessarily in the um, cemetery part, but could be anywhere on the property that they buried these men. Um, and they would have probably been given the amputations. And, and I've seen, I mean, I'm, I, I know a fair bit about the Civil War, so I've seen photographs. And it's amazing that they were taking photographs back then, but I've seen the damage right. of these boys and, and mostly boys. Oh, um, yeah, it was horrendous. Nothing civil was, about the Civil War. No, <laughs> That's what no. and, and what's even sadder, although I'll, it was. Yeah cousin against cousin in some, in some circumstances or, you know. Yeah. In, and, in you know, work. in some states it wasn't. Kentucky happened to be one of those. There was yeah. a lot of people in Kentucky that were uh, brothers and cousins against that way because of the fact that it was very north up uh, up top and very south down down below. Yeah, yeah. And I, I actually, in my research, I, um, uh, I saw a, found a photograph of... Um, not Colonel Captain Custer, he was then yeah. sitting, sitting with a, a Confederate prisoner, like right next to him, like leaning up against him. And it turns out that that was one of his best mates from school when they went to school together. And I'm like, but he was now a prisoner of war. And I thought, God, right. so, so all that history and emotion. And the one thing I found when I walked into the house um, was the house itself. For me, it seemed to be, I said it out loud, I think, seemed to be alive. Like um, yes. it, it, it's holding, I, I don't know how to really express myself properly, but when you walk in, you can kind of feel the house and it's a happy house. I don't, it's not a horror, it's a happy house. It, I, 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 felt, house. Um, I felt nice in there. Obviously, sad things have happened, like little AJ falling down the stairs. So did he fall down those stairs as you walk in the front, the main set of stairs, um, or did he fall? 
yeah, see, so poor little thing. Um, and, and, you know, and people passed away in there, I'm sure, well, I'm not sure, and you can confirm if I'm wrong, but I would, I would say Elizabeth, definitely Mary, little AJ would have died there. There would have been, like you say, the stillbirth. Uh, Andrew probably died there because nearly everybody back in the day would be nursed in their home. They didn't go to hospitals. Like, it right. wasn't no, they, they were nursed in their homes. And yep. all their funerals, all their funerals were held in the home. That's where yep. the, you know, the parlor was used as a funeral. Exactly, to lay them out. Entertain yep. people for the funeral. That's where yep. we get the word funeral parlor yep. from. That's you know? correct. And yep. uh, the last funeral in the house was, was the second under, and that was Dr. Uh, Miles Williams, and he died yep. in 1954. And he was yep. the last one that was viewed there at the house. Um, where, uh, um, where was he buried? He wouldn't have been buried on the property. Was he buried? I, I, uh, he was buried down in Franklin. Yeah, and yeah. and that and that was um, interesting to me that for the longest time the family held on to the property as a rental, and I thought, mm -hmm. oh, imagine the joy in renting that place. I'd love it. That um, but then that's where. And I want to talk about really. I found some uh, old um, uh, television interview type things. You know where the news. Yeah. Came. Yeah. I didn't realize Billy was so young when he passed. Like, um, he, he's only a bit older than me. And I thought, oh, gosh, um, how sad. But he had, um, from what I've seen of the house, his vision for it, and I guess everybody else's as well. I mean, it wasn't just Billy, but I'm assuming Billy was the main person responsible. Um, the vision that he had, had seems to have come to fruition. Like, the house is beautiful. But everything in it is beautiful the history you. that you've got there oh it's just it's just stunning and like the old flags and um you know the, the, the way you've even upstairs the, the fact that you've been able to get some of the costumes that wore like it's all authentic and sure okay some of it's not original to the home but, but you put it's kind of like the house is saying it's been brought back to life for a time yeah. there, I think the house was just a house and now it's a happy house because everything that it was built for and everything around it at the time it was built. And the very fact, again, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that everything that built that, everything that made that house, um, the timber, the, the limestone, um, the bricks, it was all made there using... The, the everything on the property, so the trees, property, everything on property, exactly. He had 1500 acres, he quarried the limestone. The yep. house sits on gigantic blocks of limestone down in the yep. basement. You can see those, yep. and, and those it's, it's, were quarried right behind the barn up on the hill. There, uh, you'll see a hill on the uh, yep. south side of the property, and uh, as you look back in the where the fields are. And uh, that's where they took all of the limestone, brought it forward, and laid it there the river for the house. Again, I read that he had about 25 slaves, um, yeah. and, that, and that slaves assisted with the building of the home. Um, and I also heard that when the war did finish, that a lot of those um, slaves were happy to stay. I hate saying the word slaves, but they were. Um, yeah. <laughs> but they well, were happy to stay because their life there with Andrew and the family was a good one and they were well looked after and, and even after they gained their freedom so to speak they chose to stay which I think is something yeah. um, you said about Andrew and the family the fact that they did treat them well and it was mm -hmm. what it was back in the day and so be it um, yeah. you, you got to remember so, something back in those back days, in those days. Uh, that was tough times mm -hmm. I mean just horrible times and you can imagine uh you may have been a good man, but you had to be, you had to do some nasty things sometimes because even after the war comes along, what do you have? You have you know, the carpet baggers, everybody else trying to do things. Uh, and then the, the worst part about the Confederates coming with the 9,000 people is that uh, the Union Army wanted to install martial law in Kentucky and take over all Kentucky to drive the Confederates out into Tennessee, which they do. Um, the last place they were at was on the Hall. Ah. 
and then they all marched. Uh, the ones that could physically march left the next afternoon and went to uh, Tennessee, where they separated yep. their forces and have them went to Nashville, have them went to Shiloh. Mm -hmm. Now, what left happened is, is that I don't think they were planning on uh, having the Union Army follow them so far. So I think they thought maybe they'd stay at Bowling Green a little longer or whatever. But two days after that, the Union Army shows up with 5,000 men and they run rush shot over those three plantations. Yeah. And, and they they did some atrocities that you don't even want to know about. Um, I, I did read one story where they came in and um, Harriet had a, a favorite cow that they slaughtered and basically skinned in front of her. And that was her pet cow. And goodness knows what they did to the women. I don't want to know. Oh, it was, um, it was terrible. Well, I, I will tell you this. If you looked at the picture of Harriet, and Andrew, that was over the fireplace. Yes, yep. Uh, is in the brochure. Uh, what you will see is you'll look at her left hand, and her left hand is larger than her right hand. And it's also very stiff. And she, her thumb's like this. Oh, no, they didn't, did they? She came to an aid of a uh, housemaid and a union officer pushed her to the ground and said, you'll never do that again, and took a saber out and cut her arm off. Good Lord. Well, brutal times, brutal times. And they uh, beat, look, they, whipped, they, they hung, they hung everything. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah, they stayed there for a week and just tortured people because they wanted to install fear before they went into Franklin, which is six miles away. Mm -hmm. The people in Franklin were hearing about what was going on up there. Well, uh, and, it, it and then they come to Franklin, and the guy who ran Franklin, they nicknamed him the redheaded demon, General Burbridge. <laughs> and he just killed Confederate sympathizers and shot people on the town square, hung people. Uh, well, they turned uh, things to soldiers' wives. I mean, it was a problem. Yeah, and look, I, over the years, when I was a little girl and I would watch cowboy movies, you know, um, and you'd have movies about General Custer and so on and long yeah. and everything. He was a monster. He was oh, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. He was the things that he did, and I think, uh, and, and I've learned about him. So what you're describing there does not surprise me because I know what he did what he yeah. made his men do to um, the, um, I never know the right word to say now, but but the Native Americans. Um, yeah. Horrific, like, horrific, like you're describing there. Horrifying. Um, horrifying. Oh, absolutely. You know, horrifying. And, you know the aborigines, yeah. the, the, the aborigines yeah. in Australia went through the same thing, didn't they? They, they did. They went, um, that, was, that was another thing in Australia. Right. We were growing up, much like with with Colonel Custer growing up, oh, Captain Cook's a hero. <laughs> yeah, um, right. He was responsible. <laughs> yeah, he was he was responsible for getting the colonies colonized, so to speak. He found the land, but oh, that, yeah. like much like Custer, in fact, too much like yeah. Custer. So um, in the end, both of those men, Captain Cook and Colonel Custer, had their come up um, Yes, they did. And, but you know, they, it's, it's they, like I said, though. The winners always get to write history. That they do, and they did. Um, and thankfully, nowadays, a lot of people are, are learning. The Waking truth, up, which is, which is good because yeah. you need to learn from it. And that's that brings me back to Octagon Hall with everything right. that you've got in there. Um, yeah. When I was in there and looking around at all the artifacts, the, like the, the, there's you've got the pistol there that you said you found with the um, family Bible. In yeah. a hidey hole, wasn't it? In, in one of the bedrooms, is that correct? Upstairs, in one of the rooms. Yes. Was under Upstairs, we actually thought that there was a uh, loose floorboard. Floorboard. So we went upstairs to look at that, and and we pried the board open, and Billy pulls out a pistol that was fully loaded, and right next to it was a was a small Bible from 1863. Yep. And uh, we had it uh, on the on the wall, 
uh, it's still on the wall at the hall in the parlor. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. On the fall, mm-hmm. far, far wall. Yep. And uh, uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. The, the hall yields stuff to us all the time. There are rumors of having more hidden spots in the hall. Yeah, you know there's hiding spots in the hall. Um, there are more uh, rumors about uh, rooms underground outside of the hall and underneath the hall. And that's what we're going and doing, uh, ground penetrating radar more and more. Uh, you know, that small cemetery that you found, the family plot, you know, yes. where you see the family plot where the four souls are. Yep. Well, uh, I had, uh, uh, the historical friend of ours from the historical society, Billy Wilkerson, who also runs the uh, a paranormal team, uh, WTF uh, paranormal. And he also does the hunts at the Old Stone Jail down in Franklin, down here across the Historical Society. Next time you come in, maybe you can do both of ours. You can do that one in his. Uh, and that would so, be yeah, wonderful. Yeah, it, it's a great hunt. But uh, he's got ground pet training radar, and he calls me. He's there for about 45 minutes, and he went, Hey, Barry, you might want to think about expanding the family plot. At the north side of the wall, there are uh, two other graves. At the south side of the wall, there are uh, two more graves. And then behind that, uh, he has already pinned eight graves and a mass grave down the way a little bit. So... Oh yeah, and that and that mass grave might be what fits into the history of the home with the soldiers. Might be. Well, that you know when the when we had the wounded there, mm-hmm. the union came in and they didn't want to. They didn't have any use for them. So I guess no, what they, they finished did. them off. They finished them off. Yeah. Finished them off. Yeah. And and, and um, uh, actually, um, it makes you feel sick actually when you think about that. Oh, really, yeah. really very upset thing. Um, the the other thing, the story about the gentleman, Eddie, is a name that got thrown around. But, yeah, yeah um, Eddie's the one. I don't yeah. know if that's correct, but 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 a soldier who was quick to get up in the in the roof and hide, um, but he w- yeah. already had a wounded foot or something, and he must have said, he probably set to see or something, and he's passed away in the roof. Um, is that yeah. correct? Is that oh, def- and, def- definitely yeah. correct? He was. Uh, he he passes in uh, 1864, oh, not from the first round, but you know the troops were always in there and they were always derailing. And Andrew actually was uh, kind of a, a gorilla himself because he backed them all. They you know he was like going, "You you need a safe place to come. You come to my house." Yeah. And Andrew also derailed the race. so it was natural for them to stop the supply line of the north going south so how'd they do that yeah. derail trains yep and uh eddie was trying to derail yeah. train unfortunately there were union uh troops on that train and he gets shot in the hand and the foot okay and he rides to the hall and of course the union follow him uh, they hide his horse and he and goes to take him upstairs and hide him in the attic. And they deal with trying to get rid of the union. The union never finds Eddie. Uh, they don't go in the house. They were all over the place. But sometimes that took a little while. So Eddie didn't get any medical attention, anything like that. While he was up there, he pulls off his boot from the wound on his leg. Mm-hmm. And when he did that, that boot was asking, uh, was actually compressing that wound. And so when he took it off, he bled to death up there before they got back up to take care of him. So he was dead when they went up there to get him. The other soldier that died in 65 was gut shot, made it to the front door of the house sometime in the night. They never heard him knock. That's one of the reasons why some people will say you'll hear that front door knocking uh, very lightly during the night and everything else. Uh, 
Uh, that's him oh, knocking that's the door. Uh, it leads me yeah. to a question for you, Bear. That leads yeah. me to a question. I heard a story, young Isaac uh, told me, um, um, for those of you who, who don't know, Isaac is grand, um, Billy Bird's grandson. Um, oh, yes. uh, yes. I, I, Isaac told me that you had an experience where you were sitting in the, at the big table there downstairs fixing a fog yeah. and you heard yeah. something. T tell that story because I'm wondering if there's some connection to the poor soldier who made it to the door and knocked because it's in that area. But go ahead, go, tell your story. I've, had, I've had so many experiences there, <laughs> there. I mean, and um, Isaac's had experiences in the hall. I've had experiences in the hall. Billy's had experiences in them. And uh, when uh, I was downstairs at the time, and there used to have a 300-pound library table down there. Oh, and uh, that table actually picked up and dropped right in front of me. And then another time, that thing, that odd noise that I heard, mm -hmm. actually pushed the table all the way toward me and tried to run me over as I was sitting at the end of it. So I had to dive out of the way. So there's been so many things uh, in the back of the house. Uh, we've had that back door rattle and people knocking on the back door uh, going into the base of the basement. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had, Which they would have done. Yeah, they we've had the front door uh, unlock and open all the time. Uh, I've sat there and heard the door uh, uh, unlatch. Just when you're sitting there, it's like someone opening the door to keep that small chain, the chain on it. And mm -hmm. You'll hear the door go tish, and then it will go poof. It'll hit that chain like somebody is trying to. I think sometimes I think they're actually trying to. Uh, if if yeah. from what I all my stuff at the hall, I actually believe that one of the children heard that guy knocking on the door, and he and she went down there and opened that door, and it scared her, and then shut the door. Yes. Billy Bird says he was a skeptic until he saw Mary Elizabeth down in the basement. And the best way to describe it, she turned away uh, from me and almost basically encapsulated herself and then just poofed into black dust. As executive um, director of... Uh, but, but I, I just adore that what has happened there and, um, and the history of it. Well, and you know, that's... That, that's all the legacy of, of Billy Bird, you know. Yes, and that's um, what I wanted to talk Billy about. I wanted to talk about Billy. Yeah. I had the epiphany of 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 uh, finding out about the Octagon Hall in 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you mentioned about the part about the rentals and everything, Karen. So when, yes. when you're when you're talking about the the rental properties, what happened is that the house uh, they couldn't keep it rented. Oh. Uh, it had, oh. people, you know, well, the first, in 63, when it first became available to be rented, there was a family that lived there for four years, didn't have much activity. And then the next family that moved in lived there for two years. And they had some activity that everybody else after that had a serious problem with the house and didn't want to stay there very long. Well, in the year 2000, you could have rented Octagon Hall with 3,000 acres, with 300 acres to it, for and the hall, do whatever you want to do on the property for $300. Give me a time machine. <laughs> and, and, and no one wanted to rent it. They would rent it and they would rent it for a month. And then say, you no, know, no. And they yeah. would be gone. They would go they away. Would go Some away. people didn't even make it two weeks in the house. Um, and they would talk about the terrible experiences they had. The house is haunted. So Billy one night, he had a old suttery uh, down in Franklin, which was basically a place where he sold um, swords, Civil War, uh, mem mem oh, excuse me, memorabilia and uh, everything like that. 
So, so he has this epiphany that says, what would happen if we got a hold of them and see if we could rent the Octagon Hall and turn it into a museum? So that's what he does. And uh, we get a hold of uh, the eight-year-old niece that uh, got the house. He's a little bit older at that point. <laughs> And they yeah. formed the Octagon Hall Foundation, a 501c nonprofit, to run the hall. And that happened in 2001. And it has been that ever since. Uh, it's owned by the Octagon Hall Foundation. And it is uh, a 501c nonprofit. And we're there just to keep it going. And after Billy died two years ago, uh, 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 we, uh, the board, uh, decided to place Isaac as the, direct, as the executive director, which, uh, I totally loved because, uh, Isaac was with Billy and me, we were, I mean, Isaac was that tall when, when I first when met him and, yeah. and we did everything together. Yep. So he, he's a chip off of Billy's block. And uh, he's uh, uh, just a wonderful man. You met him. You met him. I met him. He's, yeah. he's beautiful. And he tolerated me. <laughs> <He's> just, <laughs> you know, I said to him, because he said something about his car, and I, and, but he said, I can't do it. But vehicle, vehicle and, uh, with the southern accent. And I've gone, oh, I said, say it again. And he looked at me, and I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's very southern, the way he said it. I yeah. think I got into the seat vehicle about five times, so I'm a bit yeah. strange. Um, but he was a beautiful boy. He did tell me some stories, very passionate about his grandpa and, oh, um, yeah. and the work that's oh, done yeah. there. So I think he was a good yeah. choice. But, um, yeah, no, lovely boy. Sorry I, I interrupted. Billy, <laughs> Billy was a legend around here. He was, at the, uh, he was the president of the Historical Society for yeah. seven years. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a caver. Uh, he did a lot of archaeological stuff for schools and everything else. Uh, he was uh, in the military uh, as a uh, uh, actually at uh, SAC bases. He was at a SAC base. I won't go too much into that, but that's no, was he in the Air Force though? It was Air Force, wasn't it? Air Force. That he was over and around nuclear weapons uh, that are hidden mm -hmm. on the bases in Fargo, North Dakota. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, he had quite a life and he had a beautiful, his, his wife was just wonderful. He had uh, uh, a great, great, he had a daughter, some great uh, family members. And, you know, what happened is, is, is Billy and I became friends a long time ago. You know, we, we were just kind of inseparable. I was there with him all the time. You know, if we weren't at the hall. We were yard sale we looking for stuff to be able to put in the hall or going to do that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and you must we be. Went to, we went to church dinner. We went to dinner together. Yeah. We became family. You know, that was, you know, we I, are, he was part of my family and I was part of his family. And, I, I sort of think to myself, when I was actually at the home, because um, Isaac's story about Billy resonated with me, I sort of thought, surely if Billy could come and visit, it sometimes to see what was happening at the house I'm sure he does and I remember speaking out loudly <laughs> yeah, upstairs, I was upstairs in the room where the cupboard's got the bells on it and I spoke out loudly and said Billy uh, I don't know if you're here but you've done a wonderful job, it's beautiful and Isaac's a good boy I said <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, yeah, I've never yeah. heard anyone say anything back yeah, to me like yeah. yes I know but, uh, but I just felt the need oh and the other the other thing I wanted to ask you about too, the other room where the ladies' belongings are in that beautiful four-post bed, um, uh, the, the story was that that lady passed away and her husband donated all of her um, things because they were per time period, um, you know, the correct time period. What was her name? Was that a, an Elizabeth as well? Uh, no. No. Uh, uh, what was her, his, her name? Uh, uh, that furniture is beyond that. The real true story about that is that we had a person that 
love the Ivy Gimpel. And he uh, had a lot of he had a lot of collections in his home. He had a beautiful home. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had uh, some stuff he wanted to donate to the hall when he died, when he passed. Uh, his mother's name was Maureen. Oh. And she had some of the stuff. But some of that stuff was back before Maureen. That stuff was in the house and being carried around for many years. Excuse me while I cough one second. Go for it. Anyway, you were telling me the story about the the fellow who passed away and I'm assuming he left all the things that are in that room upstairs to the to the hall. So Maureen was the lady who owned most of it. He had that that bed goes back to a uh his his great grandfather bought that bed from uh actually purchased it from uh a a slave lady who plantation owner and gave it to her and she had it in the house this was a long time ago and he had seen it and he he bought it from her. and it had been in the family and all that stuff for so long and he wanted it there at the Atheon hall and the uh wardrobe and the dresser were all a match and they all go together wow and now, uh, his, the picture of the, if you're upstairs. Yeah, uh, there's two pictures, the man and the lady on the next. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, that's, that's his grandmother. That's Minnie. And I Minnie know. was a little off. But Minnie uh, uh, used that bed. And she's there at the hall. She's, she's attached to that attached to the bed. And, and she can come to it. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, uh, Andrew's mother, uh, and she was an Elizabeth, it was really funny, she was an Elizabeth Akers Caldwell. Uh, she was the, uh, and in fact, his first wife, Elizabeth Akers, and uh, he, she actually, he actually married his first cousin. I was going to say, oh, and that was, you, you often hear... Um, people saying, "Oh, you yeah, know, but that was the done yeah, thing the back, then. back then." You know, and even yeah, you know, cool. even the royal family guys, even the royal family, you know, <laughs> maybe <laughs> not so much cool. anymore. But it was just yeah, the done yeah. thing, and I don't yeah. think it was necessarily um, isolated to the south either. I think it it happened no, you know, no, no, everywhere. It was, it was everywhere. And it was know, everywhere. And yes, yeah. Gosh. So, yeah. so what do you reckon going forward for Octagon Hall? What, what? Hopefully, it, it lasts forever. <laughs> Actually, well, you know, one of the great, doing. one of the great things, and that's how, that's what, what what we're doing right now. Unfortunately, this year uh, we had some extremely odd weather, where oh, it's sunny and we have eighty-five mile an hour straight winds. And uh, gust up to 90, and it was just terrible. And so uh, we lost some parts of the barn. Uh, so the roof peels back. We had uh, a, a carport that lifted up, took out a telephone pole, went between two trees, then eventually goes over and wipes out the uh, family plot, knocks the wall down. The head of the oh, is that what happened here? Okay. Yeah. Then we have the well. The well also the well. got taken down, and it's all part. Of it. um, uh, two years ago, we lost the uh, slave shack loom room where that chimney was. Yes. And, uh, our goal is to repair, replace, and put all that back together again. Mm-hmm. So the property is back the way it needs to look and do. 
Uh, we uh, want to fix the hall the and hall. continue to keep the hall in great shape. So it is available for the next 50 years. And, yep. uh, you know, uh, Karen, I, you know, this has been one enjoyable time. I appreciate your knowledge that you and your investigation abilities, what you've been doing to research about it. Um, I try. And uh, I sure hope that we get to see each other again very soon. I'm sorry I didn't get to see you because I was out on my American uh, speaking. But uh, uh, hopefully the next time we can uh, uh, we, we can get together, we can talk about it and sit on the hall a little bit. And uh, yeah. if you'd like to come up and spend more time there, just let me know, please. I, I would love to. So let me save my pennies and let's see where, my life, is, <laughs> let me see where life takes me back. But um, I, I just want to say thank you for this today. Thank you so much. And, it all, oh, and, it'll help, and I, I'm hoping that it helps other people understand the truth behind some of these well, places. That's what we're hoping in, in extending Billy's legacy to continue uh, yeah. as long as we can have it continue. So. As long as it can. Bless right. you. Thank you for a wonderful night. I appreciate it greatly. And thank you for your All wonderful right. comments about that at home. And we look yeah, forward to seeing you soon. All right, dear. You will. All right. Lots of love. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.